Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben. I did not even know this was a thing that could possibly exist in the world, and so I am beyond shocked and excited. But it does. We have, bam, this is a sample of Wild Turkey 101 from 1976. So this is maybe, in my opinion, this could be the most kind of special review we've done because this is a true unicorn. This was sent to us by Mikey Likey Whiskey. So Mike, thank you. Thank you so much. So much. And this was completely unexpected too. He didn't tell us he was gonna send us this. I don't know where he got this or what he had to do to yeah, come across there's this. There's gotta but... be some sort of story there. But yeah, uh, I mean, unfortunately I do see on Instagram occasionally people post like, you know, a estate sale or something where, you know, someone who had yeah. a couple bottles locked away. Yeah, I know somebody who got a, uh, one see, of the original Eagle Rare I've 101s seen some of those in Eagle the wooden Rare. box from yep. the 70s yeah. from an estate situation. It wasn't a sale. Yeah, sure. So anyway, Wild Turkey 101, what did it taste like in 1976? I guess we're gonna find out. It looks extremely dark. It the color on this is noticeable. And we don't think it really changes much in the glass over time. But no, over, no, the color wouldn't. Over 40 something years. I gotta tell you, can you smell this from here? Like I can smell this from, that's, from the bar top. That's an aggressive molasses oh. kind of. Yeah, like, that's what I was just gonna say. It's like dark really and molassesy. Dark. Um, I wouldn't guess this is wild turkey, actually, just based well, on that first sniff. I, I will say, I have seen one or two clips of, like, Jimmy Russell, like, mm -hmm. talking with people in his office, and he'll occasionally pull out old samples that yeah, he sure. has. Yeah, um, That are, you know, this older, way older, probably. Oh, my God, that's amazing. The nose on this is just amazing. Wow, a little bit of cherry. Um, at this point, I'm shocked. Like, this is definitely, well... Maybe wild turkey smelled like this back in 1976. I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, or um, is it just, does it change that much over time sitting in the yeah, bottle? Right. Um, there's a strong oak and dust. And I say dust because this is a you know dusty bottle, but sometimes on these older ones, it, it almost does come with a dusty quality. It does. Even not on older ones, but just there's certain like well-aged bourbons that have that kind of dusty Rick House barn floor sort of and that vibe sound that may sound gross, but actually occasionally you actually get like a dirt type flavor. Yeah, but it actually works well often. Now, I don't know about this one, but we'll find out. Well, let's get into it. All Cheers. Right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Milk chocolate. I wasn't expecting that. Totally agree with you on that. That's incredible. What's awesome about it? That is super chocolatey. Super chocolatey. A lot of interesting like complexity going on. Yeah. But because it's a low proof, well, 101. It's, it's not the proof is not knocking anything out. No, not at it's all. It's just you're getting tons of barrel character that comes through because the proof is lowish. I mean, 100 is not low, but this is totally chocolatey. Yeah. You're you're absolutely right on that. I wasn't expecting and that. And a little at black all. pepper, which Seems interesting, but really good. Oh man, oak, chocolate, not much in the caramel, vanilla, or cinnamon mm -hmm. range, which caramel and vanilla are pretty standard with most bourbons. They kind of carry those two flavor notes. Um, but wild turkey tends to have a nice little bit of a cinnamon vibe to it, I think. It's a little spicy. This is not spicy or cinnamony at all. It, I get a touch of spice, but it's more in the like the fig and earthy leather kind of sure. notes. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's really dark. And there is a lot going on here. I feel like this is one of those ones you sit with this for a while. And you know, unfortunately, unfortunately. these 1976 bottles, there's not a lot to go around. And he sent us a two ounce sample of this. Yeah, so that's... again, Mike, this is incredibly generous. Thank you so much. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you so much. This is one of those moments filming this show that I would consider this to be an experience. Yes. Like you get to experience this whiskey. Exactly. I would totally agree. Um, I wonder what the age was on these back then. Yeah, that's a 
So either this was really well aged when it went into the bottle or the bottle over decades actually does have a tiny bit of influence. Well, not the bottle itself, but the air or whatever. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, the time in the bottle. Yeah, yeah. starting to get a little more spice on it. Mm -hmm. That chocolate is definitely hanging on. It's staying in that lane, but there's kind of a, like the, the prominent chocolate melt and then there's kind of like this balancing act between like barrel spice and I feel like there's maybe a little bit of I'm almost thinking hazelnut now that I've, or like some sort of a cookie kind of almond shortbread-y hazelnut. Yeah, bit. there's like, there's it's, it's a balancing out with the barrel spice and then some other sweetnesses that are trying to come out. Mm -hmm. But that chocolate is just like dominant. And this is, this is really good. Interesting mouthfeel on this one too. It comes across as a well-aged bourbon. I'm guessing it's probably eight years because isn't that kind of their jam? I don't know what it was in the 70s, yeah, who but knows what they were like, doing then. now it's six to eight year barrels. I would imagine back then when the bourbon craze wasn't quite as big, no, like back they could then, age they, these a little longer. They couldn't sell it, but yet, and again, I tried to remember exactly when, because there were times when they- There ended, was a time when bourbon was just kind of dead. Well, it, bourbon was dead and the taxation was weird, so they couldn't just let it sit because they had to pay tax on it, even though it was just like aging. So they weren't like long aging bourbon at times because of taxes. Interesting. So like there's- Bourbon's almost interesting, you know? People should do channels about it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's almost like you could develop a, a hobby doing yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think this is amazing. It is. Unfortunately, and this literally qualifies as a unicorn of unicorns. Yes, probably so. the most unicorn of unicorn of bourbons that we've ever had. You know, what, what's funny though, is you found another very unique bottle of wild turkey. Oh yeah, yeah, the one yeah, that was... It, so you were on vacation in the... And yeah, this one's only like 13 years ago, but it's, well, it's up here. There's one of them. It's the, the older bottle of Wild Turkey 101, bef two releases ago. So it was two, but, two labels ago. So it's not this bottle. It's the other bottle, wherever that one is. Yeah, that's, it sat in the sun in, in yeah. the Bahamas in and a liquor store. And so the store. label is actually faded, totally black and white. Yeah. And so we did a review of a bottle that sat in the sun in the Bahamas for 13 years or something like that. Or uh, a, like maybe seven years, I think it was. Seven years. Yeah. And so that was really interesting. And we compared that to a brand new bottle and distinctly different. Yeah, and we really liked it. I feel, I still have some of that left. I feel like that one has kind of fallen off a little bit. Maybe there is something to say about the time in the bottle for that one. <laughs> well, I think time in the sunshine, like literally. Yeah, exactly. So that, but that first pour of it was outstanding. Yeah. But anyway, that's a anyway. whole another subject. Well, but back to this, I don't know, haven't even done the math on it, but. Um, 1976. That's so three years 40... before I was born. Okay, and so that's old. So I'm, I'm 44 right now. So 47 years ago. Good wow, Lord, that's amazing. 47 year old. You now it didn't age that long, but it's still yeah. pretty. Uh, approaching 48 because we are in the beginning of 2024 you know here. So and it's probably 10 years older than that. Well, the distillate, yeah. That's, wow. This this distillate was probably, this is probably distilled in the 1960s. Richard Nixon was president. Oh my God, Richard Nixon was president? Or maybe... <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, depending on what the age statement of this is, but 76, so if it's an eight year, this is in 1968 <laughs> that this distillate went in. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, you want to talk about amazing. history? Yeah, my dad would have been 13 years old. And my mom too, she's only like six months different. And, and hundred year old trees that went into those barrels. So we're back into the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> this is an amazing <laughs> concept. You could really go down a rabbit hole on all the well, different facets of just exactly how unique this whiskey yeah. is. So, this again, is why we love bourbon. It's yeah. not just about drinking, it's about the history and the lore. And, yeah, for and, sure. And unicorns like this, so. And sharing with family and friends. Exactly. And so again, Mike, thank you for sharing this. Uh, please like and comment and subscribe to The Bourbon Note. But this has been Wild Turkey 101 Dusty Bottle from 1976 on The Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.